All right, so welcome to part three where we will be talking about Vellum. Um, I've set up a box here just to show that this is the RBD simulation. And I've also put a link to the motion operators or the mops toolkit if you want to take a look at them there over there. So what we first need to do is at the moment, this just falls down straight away. But as I mentioned earlier, we have 100 frames before this where it's going to rotate around. And so we want to kind of bring that back in. And so we can do that by doing a blend shapes. And this just lets you blend between different shapes. So let's use this. I'm going to hit Alt to add this little dot and pop that in here. And then we can also use this over here. So this is now starting uh, at frame zero. So the time shifts are after this. So we have frame zero now and we can have it running and it's going to go around and we want it at frame 100, uh, which is when our simulation is happening. We want it to fall down. So we can maybe start at frame 93 and set a blend shape and then by frame 100 or maybe 103 we want it to blend down to this. But obviously now we are in the wrong frame so let's do a time shift here. We need to get this to be now frame 1 of this simulation so we can just minus 99 so that this is now pushed forward 99 frames. So if you look at frame 100 now it'll start falling on frame 100. So now it's going to go and then it's blending and then it falls. So now if we hit play, we have a animation of the Rubik's cube going around and then it falls down and then it builds itself back up. So that's perfect. That's what we want. So something I want with Vellum is I want a, a couple frames of pre-roll, if you would call it that. So at the moment it's moving straight away, but I want some time for Vellum to kind of puff these out and make them fluffy and then start moving. Obviously I'm not going to render that part, but I need some part for Vellum to do that. So what I can do is just drop down another time shift and I'm going to just minus 10 frames. And then obviously I have nothing on 10 frames, but I can clamp it to the first. So now it won't do anything for 10 frames and it gives me 10 frames to kind of settle my geometry and then it'll start moving. So that's great. Then I have a couple attributes here, which I don't need. So I'm just going to drop down a clean node and just delete all of those. So I just have my original geometry. Now, if I unpack this, remember this is pack geometry, I have CD and my index attributes that are still there. So I haven't deleted those with this just these other attributes that I'm not actually using. So now I can actually unpack. I will leave that unpacked there because Vellum doesn't work on pack geometry. It works on actual polygons and points. So I want these points and polygons back. Something that I want to set up now, um, and I could have set it up earlier, but I'll just do it now just to show uh, different ways that we can set up groups. Even once we've already done some simulations, we can drop down a time shift. And we will just set this to be frame one, just so we have some static geometry. And what I want to do now is I want to drop down a bounds node. And essentially I want to create a group of the inside points. So when I render this, I have a specific group inside and these will all be black and the outsides will be the colors, just like a normal Rubik's cube. So to select that, I have a bounds node. Then I can use a thicken. And this is if I do both directions and then I do another group node. I can set this to be outer group and I set this to points. So now I'm selecting these points, but I want the inside points. So that's no problem. I can uh, firstly promote these because I want this to be a primitive group. So group promote and I will take my outer and go from points to primitive. So now I have that outer group. So I want to include only elements that are, are contained within the original group. So I only have these outside ones. So without this, I'm getting some of the inside ones and I don't want that. I just want these outside groups. And then finally, I can do a group invert. So if I pick my group name, which is outer, now I have all the inside points. And to check this, I can just do a blast node. And if I blast my outer points and I invert it, you can see now I have all these inside points and these are going to be uh, the material black. So I just wanted to show you now I have this, but now this is not moving. So we can use a group copy and put it on our animated geometry and copy this group, which I don't want points or edges. I just want this outer group. And now it's going to move with my geometry. So if I blast this, this is blast the outer group and dissect it. So this is the group. 
Now, if I didn't do this, um, I did it. If I let's say I do it directly on my animated geometry, you'll see that this is randomly changing the group because as it's moving, this bound is changing. And so I obviously don't want that. I want it to be on static geometry and so that my group is working as it should be. So that's a very neat way to do things if you are post simulation, but you need to grab a group is to time shift and then copy it back. And this works with attributes too. All right, so let's create a vellum balloon and we're going to use vellum balloon to configure this to make it nice and fluffy and fat. There is a great tutorial by Intagma called the Silly Balloon, as you can see here. And this tutorial is something that I've used on many projects. It's just a super clever way to kind of uh, shrink edges and inflate the middles to make something look super fun and fluffy. And so I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to use is a group copy. And I want to grab uh, a group from here and put it onto my primitives because we're going to work on the constraints geometry. And I'll use my edge point group and turn off these. Then I'm going to use a group promote and I want these to be primitive groups from point groups. This is the edge point. So you can see now I have these edges and then I'm going to use a group combine and I want to create an edges group. And this is going to be my edges point that I've just brought over. And I also want to uh, intersect or and uh, with my stretch group. So I want to kind of combine it with the this cloth stretch group over here. I'm combining this so that I'm running over this stretch group and I stretch. All right, so then I'm gonna drop down an attribute wrangle and I'm gonna call this shrink. And I'm going to run over my edges group. And this is a primitive. What I wanna say here is if at rest length and rest length is the amount of polygon is allowed to move and stretch so I'm going to multiply this by the original rest length. So the value that it originally had, and I'm going to just multiply it by a small value like 0 0.9. And then I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do everything but the edges group. And this one I'm going to set to 1.05, just so that it inflates a really little bit. And then I can drop down a vellum solver. So this is now the second input. So I'm going to pop this in over here. And I have no colliders, so I don't need to add anything to there. And let's just add some normals before all of this. Then I can just see what's going on. Okay, let's give this four sub steps. I want to turn off gravity. Uh, we will use some sort of gravity or we will use the motion that it has in a minute. But for now, I'm going to just hit play and you will see what we get. Okay, so you can see that uh, with just a few frames, we get this nice kind of fluffy behavior where they turn into uh, some nice fluffy looking soft pillows. So obviously this is what I want, but now we don't have any sort of match animation to get back to the original. So we want to bring in our original. So we have 10 frames and then it does this. But if we go to frame 20, you'll see that it doesn't have the animation. So as you can see, they're kind of moving outwards, but they don't follow any of the animation over here. So you can see they should be turning around, but they don't. And so what we need to do is we need to set up some sort of pin to target animation. And we can set that up in the SOP level, but what will happen is it only references the first frame if we set it up here. And we want to be able to keyframe it so that when they fall down, we can kind of set them to vellum so they can come very nice and squishy and fluffy and then we can kind of turn it back to pin animation. So we're gonna do it all in the solver. But the first thing we need to do is just add a ground plane just so that this has something to fall onto. And then let's dive inside and we're going to use a vellum constraint. And we can pop that in and let's set that to each frame. So every frame it's going to update itself. And we want this to be a pin to target and we can set this to be soft and we want to match the animation and this is the target animation that we want to match. I'm going to set this to one. So it'll have a little bit of effect, but it's mostly still going to be a little bit affected by the target, but I also want to affect this uh, activation. So I'm going to set this brain here so that I can move freely without it trying to um, calculate. And then on about frame 115, once it's done a few ro rotations, remember we've pushed 10 frames forward, so it's done some rotations. Then I want to keyframe this and then on frame 116, I want this to be 
fourth. It's no longer pinned. Now it's going to be Vellum. And then we can just pick some random frames. I picked 175. I'm going to now go one frame forward and turn it back on. So now we have some animation. But once it turns to Vellum, nothing will happen because Vellum has no forces on it. And so now we're going to use a pop wind. And this will allow us to kind of create some gravity with the same idea where we're going to set some keyframes the same value of these so when we get to frame 115 it turns to vellum and this pushes it downwards so we can keyframe this wind velocity and then on frame 116 we can say minus 10 which is close enough to gravity and then on frame 175 we can say we want you to be back to zero and i will also add a little bit of amplitude over here just to give it a little bit of variance and noise so what i can now do is do a vellum io and pipe that in here you can also use a file cache but i'll use this and i'll call this vellum and i am now going to simulate this and we will have our result okay so the simulation's finished and i did a quick flipbook of this this is just kind of a pre-rendered preview so we can see what this looks like and you can see where it releases from the rbd or the pins and it becomes vellum and then it kind of pulls itself back so this is following the animation and then you can see here where we turn off that follow animation and then it kind of becomes more squishy and then it pulls itself back into the animation so this is looking great except it doesn't seamlessly loop so if you go from here to here you can see that it's not quite right and even if we go from let's say frame 15 from this frame to this frame is a bit of a jump so we want to fix that by creating a bit of a loop so i'll see you in the next part where we'll create the seamless loop